Welcome everyone to Cadabra's weekly webinar. This is uh, Patrick Halstead at Cadabra, and I um, want well, to thank you for joining us today. We're going to be talking about offline forms, and before I get started, I'd like to just do a quick audio check. Marcy, can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you. Good morning. So we have a very short webinar today. I'm going to talk about giving an overview. I'm going to show a quick demo but it, it'll probably take 15 minutes. So, um, and when I say that this is just in time for your, your hol holidays, what that means is that you'll be taking your laptops to your to grandma's house for Thanksgiving or for Christmas soon, and you'll be tempted to fill out forms. And uh, if you're wondering why you can't, this is the right webinar for you. So to begin with, I um, just want to talk about these three different topics we have today. I'm going to talk about SharePoint Workspace and describe the support in SharePoint Workspace uh, to synchronize document libraries. This is a very, very cool feature that came out in SharePoint uh, 2010. Actually, I think it was in 2007. And we can leverage it to, to synchronize our InfoPath forms. There's a couple cool techniques that we'll show you. That's number two. And then lastly, I'll talk a little bit about an offline solution that we have uh, we created several years ago. And we have one question already, so since today is a relatively uh, quick, uh, okay, so I'll just let Marcy handle that. <laughs> can, can you see the screen okay, Marcy? Are we, are we okay for liftoff here? Everything looks great on my end. Thank you. Thanks. So first off, the SharePoint Workspace um, is this tool. Let me just show you real quick. I have my SharePoint Workspace here. I um, actually have a... When you start SharePoint Workspace, you'll have to connect to a site. So what we'll do is we'll just click on New, and you'll connect to a SharePoint Workspace. When you start SharePoint Workspace for the first time, there will be some uh, registration. You type in your email name and so forth. It doesn't actually do anything with that data. It just uses it. It just takes it. Um, and, and then once you get it open, you, you can use it to, to connect to a SharePoint workspace. Now, I've already done that, so I'm going to show you the workspaces I'm connected to. Um, and the first one I want to show is my, uh, my offline workspace here. So I've got a very simple uh, SharePoint site, um, and in order to see that SharePoint site, I need to VPN in, because this is the whole point, right? We're going to show you the offline and the online version. So I have a, a SharePoint site called um, um, Offline. So I can find it here. Here it is. So I have a SharePoint site called Offline. You can see that at the very top here. And this is just a SharePoint site created moments ago. And this SharePoint site has a document library on it. Uh, now, if you are using um, workspace, the key limitation with workspace is that form libraries, InfoPath form libraries, are not supported. So when you connect to synchronize your workspace, it will complain and it, you'll get this message that looks like this, not supported. So you may think, well, I can't do anything with SharePoint workspace because InfoPath support isn't there. And so I'm going to show you a technique here. And this is, this is, we're moving into two now. I'm going to show you a quick technique that you can use to, to actually use the document library to synchronize forms. Okay, so what we've done here is we've created a document library. And um, I have in this document library an expense report form. So what I did was I took an expense report form and I locally. I have an expense report form I, I edited locally. Let me just show you that. So I have this uh, stock 2007 expense report form. So wait until it renders here. I'm going to make a change to this. I'm going to say offline expense report. Just change the title. Save it. And I'm going to uh, Instead of publishing it, what I've done is I'm going to upload it. 
So I've already published it to the site underneath this expense reports library. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to upload it here. So I'll just click on Add Document. We'll browse to it. Just select it again and make sure that Overwrite is there. Okay, so I've just uploaded expense reports. And I can open it from here because it's already been published to the, the expense reports site. So it actually opens it up from that document library just fine. Okay, so by uploading it, it's still pointing at that expense reports library, um, and it's going to download it, and it's taking time because I've, up, I've changed it. Let's just make sure this is working here. I have it open somewhere else or something like that. We'll try this one more time here. We are connected, so it shouldn't really take much time to do this. Okay, so did I do wrong? I promise you, I did test this before <laughs> the demo. Um, one more time here. So in the form, what did I do wrong? So I, I published it, and it, it is a. There shouldn't be any strange permissions here. So we'll take a quick look. Security and trust should be automatic. Okay, so for the purpose of this, I'm just going to republish it to that expense reports library um, and then save it and just make sure that succeeds. And we'll just go through the entire process again. So we're publishing it to our expense reports library. And then once I've published it, when I publish the form, it actually fixes up the manifest to put in there a link um, for that library which is important. Now you can also create what they call a URM based solution and we've talked about this in the past. Um, there's a webinar, a good webinar by Mel Balsamo where she talks about how to change your form into being a, a URM based form and that's different from a URL based form. A URL based form is a form that's associated with a form library. A URM based form is a form that is uh, um, and that's fine. We can just ignore that error for now. We're not going to be opening this in the browser because we're going to be offline. Okay, so I'll close down and now I'm going to go back to that document library and I'm going to add the document again. And hopefully this will work. So I just publish expense reports to the expense reports library. If I go to the expense reports library and I click on add document, it's going to open the form in the filler and we should see that red text show up. Okay, that's good. We've updated it and it looks good. And now uh, if we go to our documents and we uh, click on the link, we should also see it open from here. Now it's important that in addition to publishing it to a form library and uploading it to the document library, it's important that you, um, okay, so we're just going to ignore that for now. I'm going to continue. It's important that you actually, um, uh, I don't know what I was going to say, I lost my train of thought here, but um, let me just go back to the, the, the slide here. We've got these steps here. So it's important that you publish it open it before you go offline. That's what I want to say. You have to open it before you go offline. So now we are currently connected and we have uh, this, this space here. If I, if I synchronize my space um, with the um, SharePoint workspace, you'll see that it's synchronizing down at the, the bottom here. And even if it's not synchronized, as long as I've opened it before, it's fine. So it's synchronized it. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to disconnect my VPN. And just to verify that that's not working, I'm going to try to click on this. It should not work because I'm disconnected now. You can see that. Totally disconnected from my, my VPN. So it's just, Internet Explorer is just uh, spinning. But what I can do is I can double click on Expense Report and Workspace. And we get the same error. <laughs> Let me try that again. 
I promise you all, we can, we can do this again with a simple form, because I, I promise this was working just fine before the, uh, before I actually tried to do it. So let's try this one more time. Okay, there we go. So it updated it, and it's opening the form in the filler. And it, it gives us that even though we're not connected, it opened the form on the laptop. So, and we got the, the update. So that that's, you know, in the, in the end it worked, which is what I wanted to happen. So I can go in here now and I can fill it out. And I can click the submit button. Okay, so that's the first demo. So once again, what I did here was I, I published the template to a form library on SharePoint. I uploaded it to a document library. Um, I you know, went into the advanced settings to the edit template. I opened the, the XSN from there, saved it locally, and then uploaded it to the document library. And then I opened the form template again. Then I disconnected my machine from the VPN, double clicked on the form from the workspace, and it opened the form just fine. Okay, so this is fine. This works really well. I can save my XML forms locally. But the question is, how can I synchronize those XML forms? to my local machine when I'm offline. Okay, so that's the next thing I want to talk about. And that, there's two techniques here. First of all, you can change your form to submit to a document library. Most of the time when you publish a form to SharePoint, the form will submit to a form library. That's the standard. But you can, using, um, uh, using Q rules, have it submit to a separate document library. And that involves uh, just adding a rule to your button to submit it. Now when that happens, your XML file will be saved in the document library. And that means that they'll be synchronized when you go offline. And better yet, they will open just fine because they'll be pointing at the location that uh, is cached on your machine. So you do have to make sure that the XSN was previously filled out at least once or previously, previously opened at least once. But, but after you, you save the XMLs to the Docker library using QRules command, they will open just fine. And this is really nice. The one caveat is that submit offline will not work. You'll still have to save them locally and reopen them. Now, or what you could do is you can use email to submit them. And you can have a separate person upload them to the Docker library. So this could be kind of a split solution. And we did a, a nice email a webinar. We've done two of them in the past. One of them recently, Mel, did a, a webinar showing the, the split solution where there's a person emailing a form in, there's a person who receives the email, and then uploads the form to SharePoint. So that's, that's another approach that you can use to submit when you're offline. Or you can just save it locally. Okay, finally, um, I want to introduce our tool. Now, we... We saw this gap several years ago, and we built a tool to synchronize form libraries offline. So you don't need SharePoint Workspace. You can synchronize all your forms in a library. It supports filtering forms. So if you have you know, 10,000 forms in your library, you don't have to synchronize all of them. It's got a lot of features for uh, conflict resolution. If you have two people editing the form at the same time, you need to know, um, you need to be able to decide which one to to use. In, in the SharePoint Workspace tool, there is a, a conflict resolution as part of Synchronize, so we had to add that to our standalone tool as well. This tool is in use. Uh, several of our large customers have this deployed to the field. You know, these you know, hundreds of different people use this on their laptop to fill out forms. Uh, for example, to fill out a form for construction, a checklist, they fill it out in their laptops, and then they synchronize when they get back to their office. The, the form, the tool also allows you to pull data in from SQL. So if you have data that you want to populate into your form, you can pull it in from a SQL database. And that SQL database is synchronized to your local machine. Um, so it does require that you have SQL Express uh, running locally, and that's part of the installation kit. So you don't have to do really anything extra there. It does not require IIS. It just requires Windows 7 um, or greater. Actually, I think we have an XP version as well. So the, nice, the other nice thing about it is it allows you to do rich reporting. Some people have, have a, 
um, purchase the tool just to do the reporting because with SharePoint you can't do reporting on repeating data. But with this tool, what you can do is you can download all of your SharePoint forms locally. And then what you can do is you can map them to a database and do some rich reporting either in SQL using SQL reporting or you can use Excel on top of SQL. And that's it. That's a very quick webinar for the day with a couple minor speed bumps. Um, and uh, um, any, I'm open for questions. We, uh, we will be posting uh, some, do some documentation online as part of the webinar. And we will probably do this webinar again in the next month or two uh, with more of a demo. We just didn't have time to put together a demo of the other pieces today. Um, but we will uh, we will continue to work on that. There are some videos out there for the standalone tool. If you're interested, you can go to the website. The web presentation actually has a link to our website in it. You can click on the on the image, and you can read about the the client version. There's a, a video on it, and um, I'm more than happy to talk to you about it. If you're interested, any questions for me? So we have a question. Uh, looks like Kevin's got a question. Could you redirect the save without using Q rules? Um, the problem is that, yeah, yeah, definitely you can just do save. You can just do file save, right? So, but the problem with that is that the user has to know um, where to save it. And um, because the SharePoint workspace doesn't look the same offline, um, you'd have to save it to a local folder and then upload it. So, so save will get more complicated. Now, if they're, if they're connected, they save it to the SharePoint site, right? And they can manually do that as well. In general, we try to tell people not to use save because save is, uh, is error prone. People save it to their local machine. They save the file with a strange name. They overwrite someone else's file. There's a lot of problems with save, and we tend to tell people don't use save don't use file save, use the button to save it. And QRules has a command that will save the form to a local folder. So you can have a folder locally where you save all the forms and then what you can do is you can have some, some technique to, to uh, um, check if the forms online submit to the SharePoint site. But, um, but yeah, the, to answer your question is really, um, um, you can Redirect the save with QRules, um, but you can't without unless they use the manual file save. Great question, though. Any other questions for me? Well, thanks again. This was a very short webinar, and uh, we will uh, endeavor to give you a meatier version next week. But appreciate your patience with our short, quick. Want want to just give you an overview of the techniques um, and what I did cover today was uh, you know these three techniques that you can use uh, to take your forms offline. You can use SharePoint Workspace, synchronizing the document libraries. You can use uh, QRules and, uh, and the email techniques to synchronize those XML forms locally. And then you can use your offline infopath solution um, if you don't want to hassle with, uh, with those the other limitations. Thanks again for, uh, for joining me um, and uh, we will uh, send this email out to you with the link and the PowerPoint deck. And we look forward to having you again next week.